<laughs> nice. Um, yeah, uh, demo file download is here. If you cannot do it while you're here, uh, don't worry, the file stays online forever, I guess. Um, welcome to One Hour of Color. Um, two years ago, I had a talk about Gribbles. Um, I tried to do the same now for colors. Uh, my name is Lino Thomas. I am 3D artist, art director at Egosoft, a German games company doing space simulation games. So this talk might contain spaceships. Um, I like colors. I, I developed a feeling for them, and I always like um, my gut feeling. But I like more than I can, that can describe why I have the gut feeling. So the talk will be all about um, figuring out how to debug the colors, how they work, why they work. Um, yeah, and of course lighting. It's you can't do can't, can't do colors without lighting. Um, yeah, talk colors, right? What are colors? Uh, as usual, hue, saturation, value. You know about it, but the three values you can then define any color. Um, so, what do we do with these colors? Um, first of all, I want to talk about contrasts because usually pictures or images work when you play with contrast. So you can think in black and white. You can also think in saturation or less saturated stuff, and in hue, of course. So you can change the color as well. It's kind of upside down here. Yeah. Sorry for the presentation. Um, but you don't have to do high contrast. So you can have also low contrast. So you can play with grays or pastel colors or like slight hue variations. And if you like contrasts, you can do the contrast of a contrast. So on the picture, we can have high contrast areas with low contrast areas. And this works for all three of these values. So if you think about these things and have a picture which doesn't really work, think if you actually have met the contrast for all of three of the types. Sometimes you only do two of the contrast and the third one is missing. And that's why the picture doesn't look as good. So in, in the back of your head, think of uh, these things. And we only have four colors or like four steps here, of course. There's much more gradients. I love gradients. There was a talk many years ago on the Blender conference about lighting. And the one th uh, thing stuck with me was think in gradients. So whenever you have a surface or an object, just slap gradients on there to make them really pop. Like we have a two-dimensional screen um, and we have three-dimensional scenes and it's hard to convey this. And the gradients really make, give a depth. So whenever I light up something, I always think, where can I place gradients? And of course, value gradients make it dark and bright, um, less saturated, more saturated, and of course, hue gradients as well. It's like really nice. Uh, we had uh, some, when I prepared the talk, we had some pictures of Blade Runner where there were some crazy good images of just full saturation pictures, but there was a hue gradient in there, and it was uh, godlike. I couldn't put, put, put the picture in here because copyright. Um, but yeah, cool, cool. That guy, I hate it. Um, in school, uh, my teacher taught me, yeah, there's a color circle and you can paint your colors and red is on top and the opposite color of uh, red is green. So my entire 3D art life, I stuck to this color circle. And then at some point I noticed, wait a minute, in Blender it looks different. The complementary color of Blender from red is not green. And this shattered my worldview. Um, so then I learned there are two of these, at least. There are more of them. I'm not talking about the other ones. Um, but for the stuff we are doing for emissive media, um, so any screens or projections, uh, we take this color circle. It's the additive one. So you have the primary colors of red, green, and blue, and when you add them together, it's white. The other one is the subtractive one. So if you mix, um, mix uh, red, yellow, and blue together, you should get black. Uh, I'd only got brown in school, maybe that's why I didn't continue painting. Um, so a big thing about the talk here will be color combinations. So there are a, quite a few, and as long as you can put a name on it, I am happy. Um, there are some more of them, uh, but I try to get through these guys. Um, so yeah, let's start. So um, it's a bit confusing when I talk about a color, I usually just mean the, the hue, but of course there are like uh, many more colors. So I, I'm sorry for confusion. If I say color, it's usually I think of first hue and then the other two values and saturation. Um, so yeah, monochromatic. We take our color wheel, we take, I want to make a picture, I don't know, a spaceship on Mars, we take red because Mars is red. Um, but with one red color, you cannot do a picture. So you just have a full red surface. So of course, we can go darker, right? So we have shades, shadows, amazing. So nice gradients, so you have like open your palette for more variation. Of course, you can then turn off saturation, um, get even more color, so like, like you get a nice matrix. And because I didn't plan my presentation good enough, uh, you can also, of course, go brighter. Um, and now you've got a very good matrix of uh, colors in one hue to play with. 
So that's my confusion. Hue is red, and then all the colors you want to do with them, brown, I don't know, pastel, rosé, whatever, uh, are in, hidden in here. And this is, of course, true for all of these hue. Like, you can turn it around, and then always think of this dot in this presentation about this huge grid of uh, gradients and colors and hues. No, not hues, but colors. Um, yeah, cool. So, can turn around. Um, example scene. Uh, corridor, this is monochromatic. I only have one color in here, but you can see in the middle it's like super saturated, very, very bright. So it looks almost like it has a complementary color in there, but it's only one color. How can you check? There's this thing in Blender in the viewer, like when you open the picture or render, then you open the scopes on the side. Uh, there you see some debug stuff, and the lovely feature I want to talk about is the vector scope, this guy. This tells you how, which kind of values are on the pixels on the picture. And this is a perfect tool to figure out the color combination or like actually what, it, it removes your gut feeling. It tells you exactly, hey, you don't have any blue in this picture. It's just your eyes tricking you that the middle is like looking a bit bluer. Um, yeah, thank you for Jonas to make this much better. Um, so yeah, um, how does it work? It takes um, or like uh, non-saturated, or it takes the vibrancy. So the more saturated colors are, the more extreme on the circle they are placed. So in the middle of the scene, you have the whites and the blacks. Um, and the more vibrant the colors appear, the more to the outside they are. And you see then around the vector scope, the hues. So the orange stuff is on this weird red line, uh, red, red white line. And then for some cyan would be the bottom. We ignore the kind of rect rectangles here in the picture. I don't know if you've seen them well. These are like for television. If the television say if you stay in these bounds, don't go higher. Um, yes. Uh, one fun thing is if you do any character work, uh, the, this line, the orange line, is where all the face colors or skin colors of any person, doesn't matter where it comes from, appear on this line. So if you need to color correct, that's your, your line you need to put the stuff on. Cool. So uh, what's better than one color, of course, or one hue, two hues? So the very simple uh, color combination is complementary, works most of the time, high contrast, very dynamic, and very simple to do. So you see it quite often, especially this one, if you go to cinema in the last few decades, it's always the same color contrast, skin tones in orange and sky and blue. Very nice, very easy to work with. Um, so take a look at the picture. Now I made it actually blue in the middle, and you see in the vector scope, it's like, uh, you can see it's like these uh, blues and the orange kind of opposite, um, and that's slightly curved. We just ignore it's good enough. So roughly place the stuff, and then we can see it's only two colors. Um, how does it work, or how can you manage that it looks good? If you have like just two strong colors, like full red and full blue opposite to each other, it kind of looks like a child's drawing. So there's always the, the play with balance. So you can either make the... Um, I pick my primary color, in this case would be red, and so this will be my focus color, and then I need to balance it with the blues, and then, for example, you could do a very desaturated blue, which is like, but larger on screen, so it's a play with saturation and, like, apparent size on screen, or you can play with the uh, full saturated blue, but very small dots scattered around the picture, so there's a kind of balance you have to find. I, I think you can see it in, in later examples when the vector scope as well, that is, like, balanced out a bit. Good. Um, more hues. Um, I like more than two. It's three. And now we are. So if I if you split the bottom one slightly, we get into split complementary color contrast. It's much more a little bit easier to handle because you don't have to be super precise. You can just uh, be a bit more um, ease off uh, with the colors you use and gives a bit more freedom. For example, in nature scenes, it's very nice to have like certain shades of greens complementing to another nice uh, warm color. Good, we can move it further, it's still split commentary, but if you move it too much, at some point, if it's evenly uh, spaced, you get to the triadic color, comp uh, co color combination. Um, and this is a very fun one. It's a bit more difficult already, uh, but it makes it makes you seem much more rich and uh, joyful. So, of course, um, I don't have much chance here to do color, so now I put a, a spotlight behind the bench and say, yeah, I like purple. Um, and here you can see the one with the balance. So my primary color is purple. I want to really get the eye to focus on it at the center of the scene. Very high, bright, and very saturated, so it really draws attention. But in vector scope, you can see the other two colors are like much, uh, much less saturated and more toned down, but have larger surface area on the on the screen. So this creates the balance to make the picture decently work. Good. Um, if you push the colors, uh, the hues even closer together, we still have three hues, but we get the, the color combination of analogous, and it is, this is one very soft, like it's very homogeneous and very easing and smoothing, so you can create, create kind of moods by picking what kind of color co uh, combination you use. 
um, works very nice. So here, now we are on Mars, everything is uh, orange red. And there you can even see more funnily in the vector scope what happens with then I put the focus on certain areas. So I made the red still like super uh, crazy uh, focused, but then you can see I stepped down the vividness, the saturation of the uh, secondary and tertiary color. Um, so it like looks has a weird, weird shape on the vector scope. So it never looks as perfect as on these color circles, but just to get a feeling how the vector scope kind of translates uh, these ideas behind it. Cool. Uh, more colors. If someone asks you to do this color combination, just run away and scream. This is super difficult. Uh, this is a tetrad color combination, and I run out of places to put colors. So now we have blue and whatever. Like you see, it's crazy. And also, it got a bit more messy. You can see like the vetoscope doesn't have a clean line between the magenta and the whatever blues. It's like the hues smear a bit. But in theory, there were four colors kind of evenly spaced. Again, trying to balance everything out a bit. Um, but it's it's difficult to make this work uh, reliably. Um, if, as it's even, evenly uh, spaced, we call it quadratic, uh, the, the quadratic color combination because it's like a nice uh, square here. You can still push them a bit. If you look at the shape, it's very like an interesting thought. You can push them together. So now we are getting a bit more uh, rectangular shape, and the m uh, higher the aspect ratio is, the easier it gets to balance it. If, so if you think, oh, it doesn't really work with the colors I use, then maybe just squish it a bit together, um, then it's, it's still like a tetradic color combination, but it's easier to manage. If you push them even more, now we get to funny names, uh, double split complementary. So it's not really tetradic anymore, or like where's the line between the color combinations, doesn't matter what name it has, as long as it's kind of balanced, it's just use it, and this is much easier to use. Cool. This is the theory part of things, and I hope now that this lovely laptop, which we got donated from a <laughs> lovely person, does work for me and the scene I have prepared. If not, I, I have a problem. Good. So, let's see if you can render, please. Good. Um, spaceships. I like spaceships. So I created a demo scene for us to do some lighting on. So we apply the very basic principles here. Uh, yes, yes. Please, please. And let's see if you can render. Yes, we see stuff. That's very good. Amazing. Cool. I can zoom out a bit so it basically doesn't die as much. Uh, let me just check if we are on, on GPU, I hope. Uh, system. We are not. Uh, probably a better idea to do it now live. Oh. Does it render quicker then? No? I don't know what GPU that is. But it renders, so I hope it works. Okay, so we have to be a bit more, bit more uh, careful here what we do. So um, we start with no light, right? Everything is dark. So we have our scene here with the uh, spaceship somewhere in the scene. Can I get there? Yeah. So, um, so what the first thing we do, of course, we need light. So usually my scenes are a bit uh, spacey. So just adding a sunlight, and it's right now just straight from top. It looks really, really boring. So, of course, we just try to get, can I get, rotate you here by whatever, like this. Try to get the direction of the light. So now it's coming visually from, we're looking down from the camera onto the spaceship, onto the harbor stuff. And I hope it's, I think it's very slow as a problem, right? Is it, is it quicker, uh, quicker the stereo? I can try, like, I've... Oh, oh yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's just hope that the GPU is quicker. <laughs> Let's see what it does. If not, we have to... Compiling shaders, please wait. If not, I have the uh, rendered out XDR files, so we can do some, some magic there. What I hope I can show it in live, at least. I don't sing the song now. I might have killed it. Mm. Yeah, 
is probably compiling shaders and just doesn't like it that I'm clicking around here. Works okay, cool. Uh, way back. Hey, who? Thank you, laptop. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm not going to make it larger because otherwise we get just problems. Uh, so back to business. My son, as you can see, it's way too dark. So don't be hesitate. Uh, don't hesitate to just make values which are really, really bright. So now I have the problem. I put light in there and have depth in the picture, right? I have the foreground, mid ground, background, but everything is the right, the same brightness. So how can we make this a bit better? Of course, this laptop will cry. I use volumes to do this. Um, mesh, 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 cube. Bam. So we just create ourselves a nice little cube and then make it big and hope that this thing doesn't die. And I want a new material and I want to use nodes. Yes, yes, yes. And principal volume. Uh, oh, ah, hmm. Thank you. Very nice. <laughs> So the uh, point C was equal to ah lovely cool. So with uh, volumes you can get depth in your picture. So please always put a volume in there. They know nowadays uh, cycles is got pretty pretty good with them. And what you can do with volumes is if you that was a mistake. Um, you can see it's like very uniform right now. There's a setting for anisotrophy, and this really helps you to um, get a gradient into the volume. So it, like it scatters the light forward towards the sun or away from the sun. So that way you depending on Please stop. Uh, depending on how much anisotrophy you put in there, you get gradients. And again, put gradients everywhere. So depending on the the position of the uh, sunlight and of the camera, you try to get a ch change the value so much that you get kind of an ingredient from top to bottom in this case here. Yeah. So somewhere I don't know here might work. I have to also make it darker, I think. Come on, please track. Yes, point two. Oof. Good. And as I put now the volume in, everything got darker, so don't hesitate to go to the sun again and just make it so much brighter. Buff. So now you can see you have a better uh, separation between the foreground, which is, has the high contrast areas of the dark shadows and the bright um, ship, and the background kind of gets into the mid-tones, so like it doesn't use any bright colors or not fully dark colors, so it's like somewhere in between. So here I'm playing with the contrast that the middle of the ship is high contrast, it pulls my eyes in, and the rest is like kind of toned down. But we still can see that something is off, right? Um, the left-hand side is kind of stopped by a dark area, the right-hand side maybe a bit, um, but somehow it doesn't re work, work well. So now the good trick or something I, I learned to love is that you start to use something called, or I call them shadow catchers. So you just place geometry around areas to just block light to get somewhere. Um, so I'll just put a cube here. Oh, damn it. Uh, X here. Shift S, please. Cursor 2 selected. Yes, nice. Cube. So I put a cube around the camera, I hope. Yes, ah, everything's dark. And then I make a hole into the bottom of the cube. Awesome. XF. Yes. So now we can see stuff and make it no I make it no big enough to engulf this foreground. Like so here in the foreground is the the walkway and like this blockers left and right, and at the very bottom is the ship. So I just scale this up now. So you will then see at some point that ah now we can see like the side of the scene gets very dark. So I use these um, dark shapes at the corners of the picture to really uh, avoid that the eye is uh, leaving the scene. So I'm playing with the dark shadows here. Um, yes, so one thing I still don't like in this picture is that at the top I have like these three three shapes and they're really, really bright and they kind of leave the top of the scene open. So instead of just going there and painting them black, I again can take a piece of geometry and then cast a shadow on that to make them look much darker. So I hope my son, where's my son? Son, son, son. 
Uh, it's coming from there. Okay, that's the wrong side. X, F. So here, Shift D. So I make just a nice little shadow blocker here. And then I have to move it so that this thing is casting a shadow. Please don't die. Yes, thank you. Uh, casting a shadow on this surface down here. And now you can see it like shadows st starting to creep in. Yes, you can do it. Awesome. Yes, yes, it's come. Yeah, good enough. So now we, I've like I just created a dark shape just by adding the shadow onto the surface. If the gradient here is too too steep, it's like very just very two dimensional right now. It's just black and white. You can move this because the sun has a certain thick like a uh, size on screen. If I want to make this transition bigger because I like gradients, you just have to move this um, shape further away from the surface, closer to the sun, and that way you can control then the the hardness of the transition. So I would like try to play around to figure out the location, how far I have to be away, and then move this shadow shape to be somewhere where it's good. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please. Come on. I don't. I'm not going to be precise here. Sadly, imagine. It's good. Yes. Cool. So this way I can control the gradients. So good. I'm now happy with the basic light setup. I have the sunlight. I have my uh, bl uh, blockers in there for, for the shadows and uh, to make uh, the contrast higher. And now we can think about um, actually lighting the object because one sunlight is maybe not nice enough and we don't even have to color, so I'd just uh, black and white right now. So um, I, I thought maybe it's easy to just take the sun and make it red. And then I, I try to I try now the monochromatic color combination. Why? We just pick one hue. Um, and then say, okay, I make my, my sunlight red, and we are done, right? So we have a monochromatic picture. But this looks like us. I'm like, no, this is... And I, I, then I tried with the volumes and trying to make the volume color it, and somehow my goal would be to make the ship pop a bit more, but with this one sunlight, it didn't really work. So whatever I tried, it didn't work. So I thought, can I have a second sunlight, please? Of course, no, because if you add a second sunlight, we just get the problem that everything gets brighter and I cannot really separate it. And then I got nasty. So I thought, okay, I cannot have two suns, but I could do a light which looks like a sun and then block the real sun from this area, which looks like a sun, and then I can separate the foreground lighting from the background sun lighting. So I will just try to do that here in life. Yeah, yeah. cool. So what you can do is you, I just move my sun a bit away. Actually, it can, does it? Yeah, the sunlight is currently perfectly facing the ship, so I just duplicate this. This is my, my second sun now. And the first one, I will change it to be not a sun, but a spotlight. And I make the spotlight like ridiculously small spot size, like one degree. Amazing. So I really have a thing shining on the spotlight. And I, I will also make it just for, for now, just non-saturated. And you give it like full beans, like whatever you want. Uh, I don't know how much we need to. Like, don't hesitate to just break Belinda. Still not bright enough. Yes, brighter. Ah, amazing. Now we have a sun. Ah, good, good, good. So, um, as you can see, I don't want this spotlight to actually cast volumetrics because it's kind of nasty and you can sometimes see the fakery. So, for all these lights I'm using now for casting, for illuminating um, the ship, I am just taking away the possibility for them to do any scattering for the volume scatter. So, an object here, but volume scatter, and now we don't see it anymore. So we're getting closer, right? So I'm like sun, one big ass sunbeam. So I need to move this this fake sun now so far away that it's far uh, that it's it's kind of yeah, it gets big enough the one degree angle that it actually illuminates the entire ship. So here roughly, right? But I'm not going to illuminate the entire ship, but I will tell you later why. Like this. Okay, we are further away, so I have to be brighter. On the way here to the conference in the in the train, I had another idea to do this with an area light because now you can change the area light spread to be like completely parallel. Uh, but I didn't have time to test it, so maybe instead of spotlight, you can use an area light and then change the um, spread to be like perfectly parallel light, and then you have full control over the how large the sunlight will be. Right now, it's just a radius here. Good. So even more on zeros because I like zeros. Ah, awesome. Good. It still looks not great, right? But I talked about gradients, and this is not a gradient right now. Uh, it's just a flat surface on the on the ship. Even with the sunlight before, the ship was just like, because it's perfectly parallel light, I didn't have a gradient on the ship. So what I'm trying here with the spotlight now is to get a gradient on the ship that the center of the scene, where all my focus gets drawn into, is a bit brighter than the front of the ship. So in the uh, spotlight, I can blend it so the 
center of the uh, spotlight is full intensity and that fades softly to the edges. Um, so I start to get a gradient here and I have to move my spotlight around to get to the right position. Where is it again? Oh, back there. Oh. So bye-bye spotlight and we just drag it as much as we need to get a gradient in there. Good. So now I have full control over the background color and the foreground color. Um, and I would also then start to actually block the sunlight from uh, from the ship. So I only have really only the uh, spotlight color hitting the ship and um, not the sunlight in the background. So to do that, I would need to place a, a shadow blocker behind uh, this um, uh, spotlight. And I can just try to see that. Uh, I have a safe game prepared. So if that doesn't work here in life speed, I can just load the save and then we continue from there, which I actually will do. Yes, good. Now you can see that I'm starting to block the foreground and only if only if the ship is only invented by the spotlight anymore and nothing, not by the sun. So I get full control over what light is actually hitting my ship. Good. So we now have a dirty uh, setting here for the, oops, sorry, a uh, dirty setting for the foreground. I can, in the background, can make the sun maybe even brighter. I don't know, 60. Yes, good. And then where's my spotlight? Somewhere. Yeah, here. Hello. Yes. And then here I can try around now. For me, it's not right now a bit too bright. So I don't know, half of the light. Yes, and then I could make any color right now. But as we do, like, uh, uh, how's it called? Uh, monochromatic. I stay uh, with the red hue and I just take the saturation out. But now we have just a gradient from bright to dark, but we have more gradients, right? We could do like the saturation gradient. Um, so how do we get a saturation gradient onto the ship to make it a bit more fancy? Um, my idea here is I just duplicate this, uh, the spotlight and I just scale it up a bit so I can see it. Um, and I could take it to be much more saturated than the main color and then increase the spread of this light. So instead of one to, to do this. So in this case, I get then a gradient from the top of the ship to the center of the ship, which is not only value, but also saturation, because now the more saturated light is reaching further than this thinner spotlight. So that way I can get a gradient from uh, bright to dark and fully saturated to unsaturated. And that's, that makes this thing pop a bit more. This takes a lot of tweaking and I'm not going to tweak here. Um, so in this case, I will actually now load the safe game here. And actually, I should put everything in this collection, I guess. So bye-bye. Yes. Light is off. Awesome. Cool. So now we take Light Finder. Amazing. ta -da. Good. So this is my uh, preparation. Or like when you play around with the, with the values, you've got uh, the gradients a bit better set and the separation between ship and background is a bit made better. What I did forget to do in the... Uh, okay, I will go to the tutorial. Sorry, I forgot, I forgot some lights. Um, where's my son? So dark. Please help me. Where's my, why, why? why did, mm. There's a button of control Z, right? That helps me probably. Let's go, come on. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not touching it, it's working. Good, so um, what, what I missed now is like, I have my foreground and the background, but it's like, oh, I should probably, probably like, like, can I control B? Uh, control B, please, yes, awesome, good. So my problem here with the ship is it's not talking to the background at all. It feels like super put on top. It doesn't doesn't feel integrated into the scene. So in this case, we only we now have our key light for the sun. It's like putting half of the ship in in, in light um, or fake fake suns. But we need the the ship to be more integrated, and we can do this with rim lights. Like I have my in the background, we have like this. Um, dark orange uh, color, and there are probably some some objects off screen which are reflecting onto the ship um, to make then the object look more integrated. So I will do that. So we just go to our ship here. Shippy, where shippy? There's shippy. I have a numpad. Oh, awesome. Uh, Shift add. Uh, we add a every light in this case. Bum. Where's my area? No. RG. Sorry. No. Wrong key. RG. Yes. Cool. Hi. Nice sunlight. So again, for, why is this here? Hello, I don't need you. Thank you. Good. Again, for, did the clip? I clicked something away and now it's dead. No. Oh. It's back. Okay, cool. Uh, sound okay, again, to uh, just for testing or like I want to set values, I just give it full beans that actually, okay, too much beans uh, that I can see what the light is doing. Actually, it was 
perfect. On, 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 bump. So again, I can see the uh, light edit is doing the volume scatter, which is not great. So we just take out the volume scatter again. Bump. And then this one is only emitting the ship and not doing any scattering things. So you can see now that I'm getting, I think we changed to CPU only again, it's a bit slower. Yeah. Do I dare now? I probably dare, right? Sorry. Oh, ugh. did I do that? How, why should I do that? Okay, um, I'd probably just go here to, to this and then change to CUDA. And then I just close this, bye bye. Thank you for spotting that. And then I hope it, it's working again. I believe. Yes, awesome, good. Cool, nice. Uh, back to business. So um, now we have this rim light uh, illuminating the ship from below. You can um, change a bit the size of it or how it's rotated. But what this does, it kind of uh, makes connect makes a connection of light coming from the bottom onto the ship. It's the wrong color, right? So how do we pick the right color? Be lazy. You can click here and just pick from the screen a, the color, somewhere the red hue we have in the background. So I don't know, pick somewhere here. So this gives you the right hue. Of course, the value is completely dark. So we just put the value up. And now we have exactly hit the color for the room light, and now it looks, looks so much more integrated to the ship uh, compared when when this area light would be missing. Um, so you can place a few of them to get like um, separation from um, the shadows and kind of carve out uh, the silhouette of the ship a bit. Good. And now I think I can go to my safe game. Yes, that's good enough. So imagine everything is tweaked, and you sit for there for hours and try to get the lights to the right positions. Uh, keep, keep, keep some, some, some. Oh, this one doesn't go there. Maybe that was a problem. No, okay. Area. Uh, volume. Yes, 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 yes. I can do this. Yes, yes, yes. Clink. And now I disable you. Bye bye. See you. And light final. Good. Everything is sorted out. Cool. So now we did all the work. You can see I have now much many more um, uh, area lights down there to just balance it out. Shadows are a bit brighter. Um, and. Uh, yes, I balanced the gradient on top a bit better. Cool. So now we can play. I have in the scene this very funny little material cube on top. Please track, please. Um, yes. Hello, please. So this guy contains all the colors for for the ship, like uh, the white color of the of the surface. I have the um, positional lights and stuff. I can change them here to my liking. So we have now the light color set. So it's all kind of reddish. But why don't we just make the ship itself uh, a red tone, so to make it really like like pop in the scene? So, ah, lovely. So I now make uh, increase the separation of the ship on screen because white illuminated by red light is kind of a bit weird. But there's a thing which doesn't really look great. Like if this this dirt on the ship, and if I render it out, it's like kind of it doesn't give a nice contrast. But we have this trick of saying, okay, oh, oh, why doesn't it look good? I can then think about my gradients. So I have like a gradient here from the dirt to the saturated surface, but it's like very weak and not strong enough. If I render it out and look at the vector scope right now, this is like a half saturation. But what would, what can I do? I can try to make the, the dirt now super unsaturated. But as we're monochromatic, so how can I make this dirt less saturated than it actually is right now? It's like probably like a very, sat like if it, even if I make it gray because the, a red light is hitting it, it's still like a reddish color. So we can do a bit of fakery here and actually make the dirt color to be kind of a blue hue. So if you light on it, you kind of move the, the apparent color on screen to be more gray than it actually is, and it appears then to be kind of blue. But if you pick the color really, it's still monochromatic, it's still allowed. So in this rule set of monochromatic, I d I'm not allowed to use any blue in the final image, but I can use blue to get there where I want to, that it appears to be blue. So I will try now to find the dirt. Turns place the ship. Oh, right here. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. So nice. Um, to then change the color to be something else. Ten I. Oh, the shortcuts are so weird. Uh, that was shortcut. Cool. That's my 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 dirt here. So you can see the if I highly saturated, you can see it's like an orange hunt. So I can try to make it now a bit blue. And then take the saturation out again to be whatever one. I hope that works. And then go back to my final shader. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it was this shortcut, right? Yeah, good. So then it's tweaking about that it actually is not blue. But this gives a very rich look of the ship. Come on, give me that. Yes, yes, please. Somewhere here. 
So I think I'm not being able to render that thing. Oh, no, please, please, please don't. Yes, thank you. Good. Um, because I think this thing is not fast enough, but I th might have a picture of this being rendered then. Uh, shave right here, yes. Uh, render, yes, yes, yes. Good. Imagine we have a quick PC and rendered everything out, monochromatic. Uh, yeah, good. So that would be, I've pressed F12 now and it has rendered very quickly. Please go big, yes, cool. So here you can see that I have my, can I control him? Yes, yes, yes. Um, that this appears to be gray, but it's like a slight blue actually in the color, like not when you pick it in the vector scope, but to get like a strong contrast between the surface and the, um, the main color of the ship and the dirt. So think about how you can abuse ambient occlusion or any dirt to get like this saturation gradient of the ships. It, really gives a, makes a read of the, of the object much, much better. Um, so if we take the scene, and I think I need another blender, I guess I can blender, blender, blender. Uh, blender. Yes, 4.2, I don't care, probably good enough. I will open the file now into the vector scope, so we can have a look how it looks like. Uh, 20 minutes left, oh. come on. Yes, cool. Uh, do, do, do. Compositing. Yes, please. Hello, I want no. It's compositing, right? Uh, use notes. Yes, I want notes. And I want the backdrop, yes. And then I can drag in my rendering. Come on, please, please, please. Render, yes. Awesome. Uh, monochromatic XCR. We drag it in, and then we can take a look. We can debug our colors. Uh, da, da, da. Can I click here and yes, click this? Ah, amazing, cool. Pictures here. So if I then do, I don't know if I have enough space here. Uh, vertical split. We do like, I don't need this one, I don't need this one. Cool. We go to image editor and then I go to viewer node. Then I've got the shippy, but on the end side we have then our scopes. Ah, lovely. Here is our lovely vector scope. Um, this tells you us uh, then if we are actually good and what we're doing. So now we can see samples, full sample, please. Yes. Yeah, cool. So we can see, can I go bigger? Yes, I can. I, I, I learned how to make it bigger. So here, and then I can do control middle mouse button. Yes, amazing. And then you can just make it ridiculously large. Come on, but your PC won't like it. Good. So now we can see it's like uh, I'm, I'm almost monochromatic. I didn't hit it. Like here you can see I'm, if I, my rule should be, I'm not allowed to use any other hue. I, I have this very slight blue hue in here, so I would need to color correct this over. So as I'm not having much time, I can show you now how to debug this one. So in theory, I, my, my rule is broken. I'm slightly blue here. So how do we get rid of the blues in here? So for this, I can go back to here. Yes, cool. There is a color correct note. It's lovely. So shift A, color, color, adjust, color, correct, uh, hue correct, I think, bam. Oh, this was gamma. I need gamma later, that's also nice. Uh, color, color, correct, adjust, uh, no, color, 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 adjust, color, color, correct. Hue correct, thank you. So this one starts always with saturation. Like this is a hue correction, so we can change the hue. So if I drag this up and down and change red to be a different color, in here I can do saturation, and here I can change the value of a color. So what I usually do is actually enable snapping, because who doesn't add snapping here? And then just duplicate this two times. So I have one for hue, I do the second one for saturation to separate everything, because in having always flipping through, through them is like very nasty and annoying. Good, so image. Yeah, awesome. Get in here and then here, control click maybe. Control shift click. Always forgot the shortcuts. Cool. So vector scope, we are here. So I'm not doing the compositing here, but this is a viewer not on the side because sadly we don't have the composite other vector scopes. Cool. So now I can say, I don't like this blue here. It's like, it's barely a problem, but imagine it's a problem. I then go here and pick this, which is like roughly cyan, somewhere between cyan and blue, so one of these twos, and can say, I don't want any saturation in here. Like, go go away, I don't want any saturation buff. And then you should, should see in the vector scope if it doesn't die for me. Zero, bam. You can see that this, this gray stuff is disappearing slightly. So you can tweak this. On the other side, maybe I don't like mass. Like the, the I didn't, oh, what's that? Copilot? Oh, weird. Can I just not uh, control V? Uh, 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 shift V? Ah, yeah, so. Good. I want to see more. Good. Maybe we don't like the, the orange shoe and we want to do something more fun. So maybe instead of having the uh, search, 
Adjust hue, segregation value. Um, we don't like Mars anymore, so we want to go somewhere else, different planet, or maybe just Earth. Um, so you can just drag around the hue slider. So if you're not, if you did a picture and not happy with the color, please do a thing. Yes, we can then change the hue, and as it's monochromatic, it will always work. The composition, to, the relations to the colors and values always work together. So maybe do your picture and then just slightly change the hue. See if like the red tone you you chose maybe wasn't great enough. And uh, maybe I want to actually have a night scene. So somewhere here should be probably blue. Yes. Awesome. Cool. So we are not at night. Usually. All right. And the gamma is fun because probably a numb killing killing a machine. Maybe we didn't do maybe you didn't like the night. So in this case we just go a bit brighter, 9.5 maybe can be, I think it was exposure, shall we, wrong note, uh, control X, there's an exposure note, that's amazing, uh, exposure, good, awesome, um, and then we can just go brighter, so please, go brighter, so we can do, we are, uh, the sun is shining brightly onto the moon maybe, but uh, full, uh, we can hide the mutus again, we can have like in Mars, it's full day, maybe it's too strong, um, but you can play with, with exposure and colors, like exposure and the hue to get the different feeling thing. Good. Um, let's have fun for another 50 minutes uh, because uh, monochromatic might be fun, but it's like difficult. If you manage to make monochromatic look good, you really know what you're doing. It's super difficult. So let's take a simpler one. So maybe I don't like uh, monochromatic stuff. We t want to have a second color. So let's try just to make the ship a different color. So I want to say, actually, was it the ship? Uh, let me just cheat quickly before I say something wrong. Uh, what did I do with the uh, compliment? Oh, yeah, okay, good. I didn't so. So we turn off the light. <laughs> uh, the sun is, uh, we turn off the light, we go to night. So I've not counted red, uh, or like I want to do an orange blue contrast because it's simple. So right now everything is red. But so I want to be somewhere here in the tier because opposite of this is orange. So I took the main sun because it's a background implementation and then I can make it blue. So as you can see now, the as the background is like a different a cold color, the is warm, it gets a really strong, instantly the ship is like bam, jumping at you, really, really strong, but the saturation is way too high. So it's like, it, it drags the ship a bit down. So again, because the background is a larger area, I don't have to have a huge, uh, uh, not a strong vibrancy. So it can be much more toned down in its intensity of, of its uh, saturation. So slight saturation decrease. And then of course the ship doesn't, it's not supposed to be, um, that's my material group. Here, this guy, thank you. Um, instead of red, we can then go to it's like orange color, right? And then we have a nice complementary color, color contrast. And then again, for the, the dirt on it, I could now try to sneak in um, the complementary color on the ship as well. So let's try to see. I, I think I did it for the dirt, for the ship here, for the matter. So here, I currently have like a rusty color, it's just brown, brown stuff. But maybe actually to try to get a bluish. Um, color and there makes it look better. So control B just rendered to just show you the, the effect of like how powerful this is. So bef without doing it, it's all like red and red and you cannot really read the shape of the engines of the metals. By just putting the complementary color in there as a gradient, you really make it pop. So think about how you can sneak in this uh, hue gradients in there. So I think this makes the ship look much, much more appealing. Um, to, if I could render it, um, to the eye than the one with the uh, orange stuff. So even if my background is blue and my foreground is mostly orange, try to sneak in the foreground color into the background and the background color in the foreground. I'm doing this in the background because of the pos position lights, which are currently orange. Um, I can also just open the picture again, render, render, render. Complementary, bam, bam. So what I did here, um, yes, cool. Um, as you can see, the ship has this blue color in the uh, in the dirt a bit, and in the background you can see I'm sneaking in the orange to really tie them together. So if I would have no orange in the background, it might be a bit boring. Um, also, what you can see is with the um, sneaking gradients in. So I also have the gradients on the on the arms here. So the bright spotlight makes it uh, less saturated but warm. But this area light getting uh, shining from the side and faking it creates like a very nice gradient from, from this warm colors to the blue colors, but again, very soft transition. So even not on your, on your main ship, try to hide every other gradients of, of this play of the two complementary colors. So I really think, where can I put more gradients? For example, in the picture, if I would have more time, I would think about, can I place maybe some more little uh, gradients in the background, for maybe spotlights or something, to sneak in a bit more of, uh, uh, more gradients in the picture. Cool. Um, so two colors, simple. And now I could like render this out 
um, again, uh, imagine I would have rendered out very quickly. So bye bye bye. I take everything. I can reset you. Reset curve. And now I am muting this exposure, and we have like 10 minutes left, right? Yes, 10 minutes. Awesome. Cool. I'm opening now my final render of the complementary color contrast. I was quick and rendered everything out. So we can have a look at the scene. Ta-da, here. Complement color color. Comp looks a bit weird. I just run with it. I'm not questioning it. So we can see now we have very strong uh, orange hues and blue hues. Um, but again, um, can I just mute these? I don't need them. Bam, bam, bam. Good. And then, um, again, don't be set. I'm not always set on the color. Maybe a pick, like in con color comp combination, I think works, but I'm never sure. So I, every time I, I set a color, I just render it out, and then I just play around with the hue. Maybe I don't like the, the orange teal, and I just rotate it around and just see, is there something, a color combination, which which m might be appealing for me, if my, my, da my daily preference. Maybe I like, I don't know, 0.6. I don't know what it is. Yellow, maybe yellow, purple, maybe? Maybe the, the other way around, maybe at point 0.1 is cool. So don't hesitate to play around with, uh, no, that's the wrong button, point I, um, to change just in compositing very quickly the colors um, to get a feel for them. You have, uh, it's much quicker than in Blender trying to balance everything out. Um, and then if you think, oh, I found a nice color combination, just pick the color from the picture, put it on the second side and then pick for the lights the color again from um, the rendering, and then adjust your light accordingly, so you can just get closer that every time in render, you blender, you got the final result. I usually prefer this than trying to hue shift the stuff and then compositing. compositing. Cool. Um, two colors. Um, yes. So, um, imagine like now the co uh, contrast here, for reasons I don't really understand, but it's the vector scope, are not really complementary anymore, right? It's like cyan and yellow. How many seconds do I have? I have like nine minutes left. Um, I want to, this is not a clean color contrast, right? Not always have to, the rules or like this color combinations don't have to be, uh, there's the, the guidelines you, or like rules to be broken. So maybe this is appealing to you, but if you think, oh man, I have to stick the rules or I want to bend it a bit, um, with these few correct thingies, you can then also change in which direction they're pointing. So in this case, I am thinking that the, I don't like the yellow. I want to, the background to be kind of orangey again to make this color contrast a bit cleaner again. So I know that this is now the, actually, I need to move this one, control, control shifty, uh, shifty in front of everything, and then mute this guy in the background again, mute by. So, and now I'm shifting first, and now this thing also sees the pixels as I see them. So I want to change that the yellows are not as yellow anymore. I want them to be warmer, to be an orange, to be nice complementary. So here I pick whatever is closest to the yellow. And then with the setting to hue, you can move them, um, can move the angles here a bit. So you can see I shifted a bit over. It's not nice and tidy because probably I need to move this as well. Come on, please. Yes, no, wrong direction, I think. Oh yeah, 0.4 maybe. Please, yes. So now I'm making it warmer and get the contrast a bit cleaner. So if I tweak it a bit, I can then try to make whatever is currently magenta a bit, also a bit warmer and that's wrong direction probably. No, that's the right direction. Uh, and then clean it up. So even in post-processing, if not everything is perfect, don't uh, go in compositing, go with the hue correct notes in there and then really try to clean up the colors. It makes it look so much more professional and tidy. Like if you don't, um, if, it, if the vector scope is not as clean or like it, this is the gut feeling. This does, it gives you the answer about why does my colors not look really, really clean or tidy. And by uh, correcting it that way, you really just nail it down and tone it down and make it look so much more polished. Cool. I think I don't have time for the um, third or the other color combinations. Uh, again, if you put on the file, everything isn't there. So don't hesitate or like grab the file um, from here. All that's at seven color combinations in there. Uh, they are keyframes, so you can just go to the timeline and every color is in there. Um, so you can just render it out and have a nice look at it. And I think that's for me for now. Thank you very much. Enjoy the Blender conference.